This is a story that was told to me by my dear, <clears throat> one of my dear teachers. His name was Rabbi Abba Pliskin. <clears throat> he was one of my teachers in America when I just started to become religious. This is 55 years ago. 50-something <clears throat> years ago. So, <clears throat> so the story is like this. That... Once there was a king. A king went out and he went out hunting with his entourage. He had his guards and his soldiers and his friends and his other, you know, the, the other barons and stuff like that. And he used to love to go hunting you know, foxes and wild boar and things like that. <clears throat> and he was really good at it. The king was really good at it. So they, they went out hunting one day. And hunting the whole day. They caught foxes and they caught wolves and they caught all these things. Oh, the king was really happy. And then the king saw like a, a, a particularly beautiful fox or big, what is, wild boar. And he set off for the chase. And he shot at it. And he missed it. He shot. And he was going, he was running. He almost shot, almost cut it a couple times. And it, it, it eluded him. But he jumped over this thing and he was running, riding after this thing. It was amazing. He was so happy riding his faithful horse into the, <clears throat> the, the, it was a force, it was a, like a, a, a wintry day. And he was jumping and going and riding. And it was just, life was with the wind was blowing through his hair. And, it, it, it. <clears throat> and um, finally, he caught this, uh, he, he shot at this uh, boar, he shot an arrow at it, whatever he did, and he killed it and he got it. But now he looked back. And he didn't notice, but it was starting to get dark, starting to get cold. A cold wind was blowing. And um, he had gotten separated from his entourage. It seems that he he just was, you know, twisting and turning in the forest so much that he lost them. So he pulled out this little horn that he had, and he sounded the horn so they would hear him. And usually when he would sound the horn, they would sound the horn also, and he would go to them. They would come to him. So he sounded the horn a few times, and they didn't answer was no answer. And he started to think, maybe I got so far away and the wind was starting to blow. So he was thinking, well, maybe the wind is blowing the opposite direction. It's blowing against me. And so they can't hear it. So he's blowing. It's starting to get darker and darker and getting colder and colder. And the wind is blowing. And suddenly he hears the, you know, the wolves are starting to howl. And his imagination starts to play with him. He thinks maybe he hears some growling in this. And then he's starting to think, listen, well, you know, maybe there's robbers over here. Maybe there's thieves. Maybe my enemies. I'll sound this horn and just tell them where I am. So he puts the horn down, doesn't know what to do. He's getting, it's getting really cold. And um, he wasn't exactly dressed for such a tremendously cold thing. He has this cape like he put it on. And he's going with his horse and he's really you now starting to get afraid. He's starting to get scared. He doesn't really know what to do. And he's lost his direction. He can't exactly figure out where is the castle, where the castle was. There's hills, and as he went over hills and mountains, he can't see, and he can't see where the sun is. What this is, anyway. So he's going, and he's really scared. And he sees in the suddenly in the middle of the forest, he sees a little hut, a little hut with a, it's it's a woodchopper's hut. So he thinks is maybe there's light inside. And he puts his, ties his horse in a sort of a safe place far away. And he goes, looks in the window. And he sees there's an old man sitting there, an old, an old Jewish man sitting there. And his wife is sitting knitting in the corner. There's a fireplace. And meanwhile, this king is like almost, he's almost frozen. He's been wandering around in the dark for like an hour, two hours. And he's really cold. So he knocks on the door. And the woodchopper says... Uh, who is it? If it's if it's thieves, I haven't got anything to steal. He says, no, no, open the door. So he opens up the door, and he the king comes in. He falls down, falls in. Now the woodchopper, he doesn't know what the king is. No idea what the king is. He's a woodchopper, a simple guy. <clears throat> so he lets the woodchopper in, and the um, he lets the king in. I'm sorry, lets the king in, and he gives him some. You know, a, a couple of cups of vodka and hot soup, and he puts him in the corner near the, the the stove, and he covers him up, and the king goes to sleep. The king wakes up in the morning, 
And he says to the, uh, and things now become much clearer. And he says to the wood chopper, you know, can you tell me where is the, where's the castle, the king's castle? He says, over in that direction, go. there's a little road over here. Go there, you'll see, you can go there. What do you have to go there for? He says, no, no, no. He says, I want to pay you. He says, no, 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 why should you pay me? What, I, I gave you a couple of glasses. I'm happy to have a guest. I'm, I'm happy to have a guest in my house. It's a big pleasure for me to have a guest. You know, I'm here alone, me and my wife. I used to be a wood chopper, but now I'm a little bit old. I got a little bit of money saved up. And the king says, well, take this. You know, no, I have everything I need. I don't, I don't have to. Have <clears throat> so the king says, okay. He forces him to take the money. Well, anyway, so the king leaves. The man has no idea that this was the king. Next day, <clears throat> early in the morning, the wood chopper sees he's in the middle of praying. and is, what? He finishes praying, and he hears a big noise outside. With trumpets, doo, 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 doo. his wife said, "What could that be?" There's a knock on the door. Two really, like, finely dressed soldiers are standing there with big, you know, big mustaches, and they say, "Are you uh, the wood chopper in the middle of the forest?" Said, "Yeah, there's no other wood chopper." Well, the king wants to see you. He says, "Listen, maybe you got the wrong address." You know, he says, "There's other wood choppers in the middle of the forest." No, there's none other. So the king wants you. Get ready. We're taking you to the king. His wife says, the king wants to see you. What are you going to do? He says, prepare me, prepare me a couple of sandwiches or something, because I'm sure there's no kosher food over there. And he puts on his Shabbos clothes. And they take him in the the chariot. Not the chariot. What is it? The, 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 the royal coach. Oh, royal coach. And it's drawn by like four white steeds and they're racing down the road they come to the palace and they sound the horns doo, 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 and they open up the gates and they open up the another gates and other gates and he comes comes out and they lead him into the chamber and other chambers and all the guards you know they open up their swords their swords were crossed and they let him in and suddenly he's standing in front of the king and he says your majesty what is this he says, oh he said um you're probably wondering why i want you here so, well, I have uh, scouts all over the country, and they've told me that you are the most honest, straightforward person in the whole kingdom. And I've decided I want to make you as one of my advisors. Your hours will be one hour a week. You can bring your family, your friends here. I'll give you free home. You can come and go as you want. <clears throat> Your wages will be a thousand dollars a week. Understood. If I some emergencies come and I need your advice, but except for that, you just have to come one hour a week, and then that's all. And that's that's your obligation. I'm very grateful, Your Majesty. You know, I'm just some, I'm a simple person. Says, no, the king said, don't tell me. I know. I know who you are. I know how humble you are and honest you are. <clears throat> and therefore, I have chosen you. And you can come here. You can bring your friends. You can bring your family. And everybody you want to, $1,000 a week, a 1,000 gold, golden pieces, whatever is a week. And you'll be set for the rest of your life. You and your family, you can bring anybody you want. So thank you, Your Majesty. I'm so grateful. I'm, this is just one thing. One thing. You have to change your religion. You're Jews, right? You're a Jew. I can't have a Jew for, as my advisor. It's not nice. A Jew for my advisor. The church won't understand. The people won't understand. The bishop won't understand. You have to change your religion. You change your religion, and you get everything you want for free. So the, the woodcutter says, Your Majesty, you know, I'm, I'm so grateful that you've chosen me, and you're making me this offer. But I'm sorry. I, I have no alternative. I, I, I must... Please understand me. I have to decline. I can't deny my Judaism. The king, all of a sudden, he had this big smile on his face. All of a sudden, the smile fades. The king leans forward. Fire is in his eyes. He said, what? You think I'm your friend? You can talk to me like somebody in the street. I'm the king. If I say you change your religion, you change your religion. And if you don't, suddenly five 
big, huge men come out with hoods over their heads. One puts a big stump on the ground. Two more grab on to the man's arms, to the Jew, to the Jew's arms, push him down. <clears throat> Two more grab on to one grabs onto his feet. Another one grabs onto his hair, pulls his, pushes his head down. And uh, comes out another one with this big sword, flips it around a couple of times, raises it above his head in order to chop off the Jew's head. And so he said, if you do not follow my orders, then you will be beheaded. If you do follow my orders, then you'll have richness, fame, comfort, security for you and your family for all generations. What do you say? says, what I say, I was born a Jew, I am living as a Jew, and I'm going to die a Jew. Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. Yells out. The king gives a nod. The swordsman lifts up his sword. The, the, what do they call it? The henchman? The, the, this, the, the execute, uh, executioner. Raises up his sword, and he yells, gives out a, a yell. Ho! Whoop. But the last second, he turns the sword on its side, and he doesn't hit him with all of his power. Just taps him on the neck. But it's enough to make him faint. Makes him faint. It makes him faint. And next thing he knows, there's big pieces of these. Uh, the, the, the birdies are twinkling. And this, 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 he wakes up. He says, he's awake. What's going on? He says, here's the king sitting there. Am I in heaven? What's going on? This is heaven. The king is sitting there. What? The king says, please stand up. Stand up, please. And he said, I'm, I'm sorry. I had to do that. I'm giving you all the benefits that you want, anything you want to. Say, so, I don't understand your majesty. Why did you do that to me? Why? He said, I'll tell you why. <clears throat> he said, <clears throat> do you recognize me? He said, I don't recognize, how do I recognize? He says, look, he takes off his coat, takes off his crown, a gasp comes out from the crowd. From the crowd. Well, he says, yes, you were the one that was by my house the other night. I saved your life. I saved your life. Why did you do this to me? He says, I'll explain Brings him a chair, Avram, sit down. <clears throat> he said, when I was a small boy in the castle, my father used to let me walk around, talk to the workers here. And it was interesting, you know, it was interesting, but there was especially interesting, there was a tailor, and he was a Jew. And he lived in the castle grounds, and he had several children. And he would teach the children Torah. And the children were very, really, very respect. They respected him and they respected everybody. They respected everyone. And I would come and they would give me great respect. You know, they were this, but the, I saw, I, I asked the father if I could sit and listen. He would teach his children ideas in the Torah, in the Torah. And there were such amazing, wonderful ideas. And I saw it, it had an effect on the children, it had an effect on me also. One thing that really amazed me was Abraham. The story about Abraham. And how Abraham was willing to even die for God. He didn't care about going to heaven. The whole entire Bible doesn't mention heaven or hell. Right? I asked the, 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 the tailor, says, what about heaven and hell? He says, there's such a thing, but we don't, we're not that interested in heaven and hell. We're interested, like Abraham, just serving God. Even being willing to die for God. Right? Just that that's what God wants, to do what God wants. I thought, what type of a people are these? What type of religion is this? So every other religion that I know, I talk, there's other workers, different religions, they're all thinking about going to heaven, thinking about themselves. And these people are only thinking about going to God, even giving their lives. That's the biggest gift that they can have, the biggest thing. I thought to myself, okay, now you just saved me. I'll give you money. You saved my life. I have to give you the biggest gift of all. So what am I going to do? I'm going to kill you. That is, so I figured I'll make this whole, this whole play. I made up. So that you'd be willing to give your life. And that you, in fact, would give your life. But I wouldn't take it. I wouldn't take your life. I couldn't do that to you. But it ended up that you got the biggest gift of all that you could possibly have. Is that you were willing to give your life for the Creator. Just like Abraham. And I really respect that. That's the essence of what Judaism is. That's how Jews will impress the whole entire world. And teach the whole entire world that everyone is created by God. And God wants only the best for everyone. 
Have a good day with Mashiach now.